All right, next up is Armageddillo. I, I mean, it's like Armageddon, but Armadillo, right? Six mana, four, seven, warrior, legendary beast with taunt. And at the end of your turn, give all taunt minions in your hand plus two, plus two. The fact that it's only taunt minions is a little, it's a little poopy, I think. If you just get this on one other minion, then the stat line becomes six mana, six, nine, which is decent. If you hit this on two minions, I think it's definitely worth it. It would be a tough card, I think, to use, but if there's a control warrior, I think that could work. It's going to be an okay card. Next up is Plague of Murlocs. Here we go. Now we're talking about the real cards. Three mana shaman spell transform all minions into random murlocs. Oh no. You know, there are some high quality murlocs as, we, as, as we've seen. Wait a second. Oh, your boy Jake caught on to something. Transform all minions into random murlocs. It's not just your own minions, it's the enemy too. This is amazing. Never mind. <laughs> it's a new version of Devolve, which is actually better in my opinion. The fact that it turns enemy minions into murlocs is amazing, because as I just said before, they all suck. And so if you're playing against like a healing druid that all they want to do is keep these 4-8s, I think, popping up with taunt because they're healing themselves. You can turn it into a 1-1 Murloc and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love this card, actually. Next up is Psychopomp. Look at the gains on this. Boy! 4 mana, 3-1, Priest, Minion with the Battle Cry, Summon a random friendly minion that died this game. Give it Reborn. The one thing that kind of sucks about this card is that if you play one, then when that one dies and then you play another one, it could end up respawning this in a resummoning priest, which has a lot of tools right now. It just hasn't really come together yet. This would be an amazing card, especially with a powerful death rattle. Uh, the fact that you would get that death rattle twice. Man, this has a lot of potential. I look out for this one. Maybe not this expansion. Maybe the next. We'll have to see what cards drop. Plague of Madness. All right, these are one of the plague cards. But this one is a one mana spell for rogue where each player equips a 2-2 knife with poisonous. A 2-2 knife with poison is really powerful because uh, you can kill any other minion with it. You could also use it to get rid of your opponent's weapon. I think in mirror matches, this would help fight against the, uh, the good old Fortnite pickaxe. And in fact, it's more of a control card in my opinion because you give your opponent that 2-2 knife as well. You're taking some damage. Rogue doesn't really have any way of healing though. I could maybe see a one-off of this in the deck, but I think that's kind of optimistic. It depends where Rogue's at, but this is a tough one for them to use, I think. Next up is Salhit's Pride. Three mana, three one, Paladin Beast with the Death Rattle. Draw two one health minions from your deck. Death Rattle means that's not instant. That's not good. And then a three mana, three one. Terrible stat line. <laughs> it almost made me barf that stat line. I could only see this being used if you're desperate for draw and you have one health minions, or maybe you're specifically trying to draw these one health minions. No bueno. Next up is Sand Wasp Queen. Two mana, three one, another paladin beast with battle cry. Add two, two one sand wasps to your hand. This one sucks too. What the hell? It's already better than Salheat's Pride, but unless it's some sort of hand buff deck or there is a beast synergy that I haven't seen yet, this is, uh, this is a little concerning. Maybe there's a one health minion synergy? What's going on? <laughs> All right, Brazen Zealot. I've seen that word before. I just don't remember how to pronounce it. Zealot. One mana, two one minion. Whenever you summon a minion, gain plus one attack. Again, the stat line is very concerning. One mana, two one. You need a good one drop in order to play a one drop, and this is just not good enough. Bees. Three mana, druid spell. Choose a minion and summon four one one bees that attack it. If you attacked your own scarab, it would essentially deal zero damage to those bees, right? What, you'd have seven minions out on the board with a two card combo for like is that five mana four mana so maybe a token druid could use that i'm slowly going crazy this is a good card though i like bees i can't wait to see the animation on that bees that's gonna be cool next up is weaponized wasp three mana three three shaman beast with the battle cry if you control a lackey deal three damage three mana three three deal three damage is pretty nice still i don't see a deck really forming around this i don't think uh, shaman has enough good cards 
to create some sort of tempo deck like this. If anything, I think they're going in a control direction. I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> Next up is Raid the Sky Temple. One mana mage quest where you have to cast 10 spells and the reward is a, the Ascendant Scroll. The Ascendant Scroll. It's a hero power where you add a random mage spell to your hand and it costs two less. Hello, Cyclone Mage. The hero power itself, I think, is good, but it promotes a more controlling deck, which I don't mind, but I don't know if it works with the current Cyclone Mage kind of prototype. Definitely an interesting card, but I wouldn't bet on it. Next is Impalming. Imp Bombing, four mana, Warlock spell, destroy minion and shuffle three worthless imps into your deck. What's the advantage of this? Four mana, destroy minion? It's okay. Destroying a minion will come at the cost of maybe later on, you're gonna get a bad card. If you're playing a control warlock, if you end up drawing one of these worthless imps after using it, hopefully you still have like a twisting nether or something else in order to deal with the board. I think this is uh, is pretty good. We'll see if warlock is good enough to uh, actually use this card, but I think it's a good card and a step in the right direction. But watch your step for this next card, Earthquake. Seven mana, shaman, spell, deal five damage to all minions, then deal two damage to all minions. Oh, okay. Shaman's kind of pulling out some fun tricks right now. Literally. It's better than if it was seven mana deal seven damage because having two cycles of damage allow you to get more value if something spawns off of a death rattle. It's a good card. It's another one to add to control Shaman. It's a bit expensive, but I think they're amassing quite a bit of removal. We'll see if they can compete in a control matchup. Next up is Corrupt the Waters. One mana quest for Shaman. This is going to be important to their control deck. Uh, the quest is to play six Battlecry cards, and the reward is Heart of Renal. Ah, oh, what a cute heart. It's a hero power where your battle cries trigger twice this turn. You can get a ton of powerful combos when your battle cries end up triggering twice and uh, I think it's a really smart use of the quest mechanic because you don't want to give a player this ability right away making them play six battle cry cards which is a really easy requirement. Most of the good cards are battle cry cards and then making them spend two mana each turn that they want to use this. I think it's a pretty fair card. This is something that a control shaman could definitely use. A lot of their removal isn't battle cry based. A lot of it is just spells. But if they want to get value out onto the field, this is good. Of course, there is your boy Shutterwalk, which uh, if you save your coin or you get another coin somehow, you could end up doubling your battle cries and then playing Shutterwalk and doubling those battle cries and using all the battle cries you play that game and it would be insane. I don't know if triggering your battle cries twice would count for the Shutterwalk. I would imagine not because it, it says trigger it twice. It doesn't say like your battle cries play twice, but Shutterwalk has always had weird interactions. So I'm not really sure about that. It's a fun quest. I think Shaman's had a lot of good cards so far, which is weird to say. So let's continue. Oh good, we got Jar Dealer. Look at this. What are you doing? What are you doing, man? One mana, one one neutral minion with the death rattle, add a random one cost minion to your hand. One cost minions are bad, so maybe it wouldn't be that great, but in an aggro deck, you could get some more value out onto the board. It's not terrible. It's not great though. It makes sense as a neutral card, so maybe it could see play with that death rattle synergy, but I, I don't think so. Next up is untapped potential, druid quest that requires you to end four turns with any unspent mana. Osirian Tear, passive hero power. Your choose one cards have both effects combined. So it's like uh, it's like our good boy Fandral. Being able to get both effects with the choose one cards make all of those cards better. So the fact that you can get this relatively early is enticing, but you have to remember not spending mana, uh, it's not an amazing thing to do, especially in the early game against other aggro decks. You're not required to complete the the quest in those five turns you can wait if you're playing an aggressive deck and and not even get your reward at all you don't even need to complete your quest you can mulligan the quest if you're going against aggro and so i think the quest actually has a lot of flexibility there's some decent choose one cards in the game right now let me know what you think i think this might be the most powerful quest 
Here is the evil totem, 2 mana, 0, 2 shaman totem. At the end of your turn, add a lackey to your hand. I don't think lackeys are the way to go for shaman though. It doesn't work in a control deck. And this isn't really that good because it's basically 2 mana, add a lackey to your hand, and then save 2 health from your face because your opponent is just going to easily kill this with very little repercussions. No, it's not good. Puzzle box of yogg 10 mana, priest spell, cast 10 random spells, targets chosen randomly. You gotta have a yog each expansion, guys. You know, let the kids meet. That's all I gotta say. You cast this one turn, you see what happens. My hope is that you puzzle box of Yogg-Saron into another puzzle box of Yogg-Saron, but they might have coded to prevent that, and I think that's a shame if that doesn't happen. It's a fun card. <laughs> Next up is Plague of Death. I don't know why a bunch of animals being killed in a sinkhole or some quicksand is funny, but <laughs> look at that little camel chilling. Later, dudes. I love death. Nine mana, priest spell, silence and destroy all minions. It's like a twisting nether, but kind of better too. I don't know if, if priest has a control deck in them. I don't know if they have enough cards. You can't really play anything else when you use this card, but with that silence, I think it's pretty good. If a control priest sees play, why wouldn't they run this card? So uh, yeah, this is pretty good. Then there's restless mummy. 4 mana, 3, 2, Rush and Reborn minion, 4 warrior. So basically it's 4 mana for 6 damage? Is that correct? So that's that's kind of decent actually. You can't direct it at a specific minion if taunts in the way. That's the only difference from this like being a spell that just deals like, like a fireball. Like a fireball is great because you can go face with it or you can uh, attack a specific minion. This, you can kill one minion and then you know, use the reborn rush to kill another minion, and so maybe dividing that damage is an advantage, but it just needs more synergy, I think, to see play. I don't think it's good enough just on its own, so we'll have to see what comes up. Next up is Questing Explorer. Two mana, two, three, neutral minion, battle cry. If you control a quest, draw a card. Seems pretty easy. Um, You'd have to draw this, I guess that's a downside. And if you complete your quest and then you draw this card, then it's like, well, that wasn't that wasn't that great. It's not a card that you'd like take home to your mom, because you know. It, it <laughs> where am I going with this? And last up, Supreme Archaeology, one mana warlock quest where you draw twenty cards and your reward is the Tome of Origination. Hero power, draw a card. It costs zero. So maybe there's some sort of shuffling warlock they're trying to incorporate there is plot twist which you can combine with that shuffling elephant to get a bunch of cards in your deck there's some interesting things i guess you can do in warlock to try to add more cards to your deck drawing 20 cards is incredibly hard to do even in warlock if you try to rush it then what's the reward going to do for you unless you have some sort of game plan shuffling cards back into your deck. It could be just a really slow quest and maybe that's the way to go. I think Warlock would have a tough time using this against aggro decks. We haven't seen a ton of Warlock cards, so maybe there's something that can round off this quest and make it possible, but I think this is kind of weak. All right, well, there you have it. Uh, that is all for now, and until next time, ta-ta.